Hi, I'm Dorin Puslaru from Cloud-Based Solutions. In this demo, we're going to show how you can leverage Azure Migrate and Coriolis to migrate workloads from VMware vSphere to Azure Stack. We detailed how Coriolis works in previous videos, so this time we will focus on the integration with Azure Migrate. First, let's create the necessary cloud endpoints in Coriolis. This is just a matter of filling up some forms in the interface with standard user credentials for each platform. Coriolis then performs an automated validation of the endpoint, ensuring the network connection and the login credentials are all correct. We also need an Azure Cloud endpoint in which we will create the Azure Migrate project and assessments. We are also creating a second Azure Stack endpoint which leverages the multi-tenancy support added in Azure Stack Development Kit 1808. We will use it as a destination for our migrations in the final part of this video. Azure Migrate is an Azure Cloud feature which provides reports and analytics for migrating VMs to Azure. Coriolis simply leverages the information in the assessments to carry out the actual migration operations to any desired Azure location. We create a new migration project in Azure Cloud. The decision of which research group to create the migration project is not that important as it is used just for storing the assessments metadata. The discovery process is using the Azure Migrate Collector appliance, which we have already downloaded and deployed in our VMware environment off-screen. We are using the Continuous Discovery appliance, which profiles the environment continuously to gather data on resource utilizations for each VM. What's left to do now is to connect it to our vCenter server and to our migration project. The discovery process takes around 60 minutes. After the discovery is complete, we can see the gathered metrics for all our VMware VMs in the Migrate section of the Azure Dashboard, after which we can create an assessment. For the purpose of this demo, an Ubuntu 16.04 and a Windows Server 2012 R2 VM will be used. Using the credentials stored in the Azure Cloud endpoint we created previously, Coriolis queries the Azure Migrate API to read the data of the assessments we created. Coriolis will then match the source VMware environment provided by the API to one of our endpoints. It then queries the VMware endpoint and matches the VMs from the assessment. If a VM is missing, it simply shows an error next to it and it will be not included in the migration. Afterwards, based on the selected location and the resource group, it matches the VM sizes from the assessment to the ones available on the selected destination endpoint. Now let's switch the destination endpoint to our multi-tenant Azure stack. Coriolis will now rerun all the previously mentioned steps with the new destination in mind. If the selected destination Azure endpoint does not offer the VM sizes recommended by Azure Migrate, the user can either manually select one or have Coriolis auto-determine a VM size which most closely matches the resource requirements the VM had on the source platform. 
The only action the user is required to take is to specify the destination Azure network subnet selections for each network the VMs were attached on the source. Now we can create a replica execution for those two VMs. The disks of the VMs are transferred and written over to new blob storage based disks on the destination platform. Coriolis can also sync to manage disks if preferred. The transfer speeds shown here are with Coriolis deployed as an all-in-one appliance within Azure Stack, with Coriolis using a VPN to connect to the source vSphere data center. Let's log in to check on the still running vSphere VMs we have just replicated to our multi-tenant Azure Stack and edit a random file in the source Windows VM. Let's also perform a small edit in our Linux VM as well. Ok, now we will execute the previously created replicas again. Coriolis will copy now just the disk sectors which have changed since the previously executed sync, without interfering with any running workload. This process is again completely agentless, the user's workload is a black box, this means that Coriolis doesn't require any guest access or credentials to the VMs. We will now ask Coriolis to deploy the previously replicated VMs. Coriolis will now service the OS installation on the previously synced disks and perform platform specific actions to ensure the VM will perform as expected on Azure Stack. In this case we have to uninstall VMware tools and add and configure cloud-based init for a first run on Azure Stack. As expected, the updates previously done to this file on the source VM have been successfully replicated. The process for deploying the Ubuntu replica or a replica of any other Linux VM is identical to the procedure for a Windows VM. Let's check if our file exists. The file is here as expected, the VM has been successfully migrated. 
Thanks a lot for watching this video and happy migrations.